This is the Harley Benton TE52 Telecaster. I've had about a million requests to do a video on one of these, so let's get into it. G'day folks, this is Shane. Today we're checking out the TE52 Telecaster from Harley Benton. Let's check it out. Here's the guitar up close. Now for those unfamiliar with a Telecaster, we have two single coil pickups. These are Roswell pickups. We have a three saddle bridge as well. I really dig these. Some people like the six, but I'm a big fan of the three on a telly. I think they look great. And we have a volume and a tone control and a three way toggle switch for selecting between the pickups. Now we also have a string through body as well, which is pretty sweet. And the neck on this is actually quite chunky and it's Canadian maple as well. So if you're into, you know, traditional 52 style tallies, you're definitely gonna like the neck. And it's a satin finish as well, which feels really great in the hand. There's no need to sand this or anything like that. It feels really, really good. Now, in terms of the tuners, this is probably the biggest letdown on the guitar. They all feel completely different to each other. Now, they're kind of like Cluson style tuners. These are pretty much the same as you see on a lot of other guitars. Um, but the thing with these particular tuners is they're not great. So some hardly turn, you've got to really like, you know, push pretty hard to turn them. This one, for example, has so much play in it that it takes a while before it even kicks in. And these ones are just really loose. So it's one of those things that they're all a little bit hit and miss in terms of the tuners on this particular guitar. I'm not gonna say they're all bad, but on this particular one, the tuners aren't great, but they're functional. I could replace a couple, but I just thought I'd mention that in the video. If you didn't see my unboxing video, I'll post it up in the cards, but one of the first things I noticed when I picked this up was, wow, it's got a bit of weight to it. It's very, very similar to my 52 reissue Telecaster from Fender in terms of weight. So if you're not frightened by heavier guitars, then you'll definitely get a kick out of this. Now in terms of the frets, the great thing about this guitar is they didn't put those vintage frets on that wear out really quick. They put wider and slightly taller ones in this guitar. I don't know exactly what they are. They kind of look like medium jumbos in terms of their width, but I'm not 100% certain. Now, in terms of just how this plays and sounds, you're about to hear it straight out of the box, straight into my hands and straight onto YouTube. So let's get into it. A huge thanks to Toman for sending this out. I really appreciate it. If you want to find out more about it, I'll post all the links on screen and in the description below. Let's get into it. All right, let's kick things off. Today I'm plugged into the Kemper Profiling Amplifier using a profile I made of all of my own gear. So this is the PV Bandit 112, the Red Stripe Bandit with a Texas heat speaker and also with a little bit of delay. So here we go. We'll try some clean tones in a sec. This is Bridge. <laughs> Now with the volume control down, bridge pick up still. Let's keep the volume down and we'll go over to both pickups. Volume all the way up. That's as tally as you're gonna get. And with the volume back up, it brings all the clarity back in. Alright, 
over to Neck Picker. And that's with the volume all the way up, so back down. Cleans up nicely, back up. It's got a nice clarity in the top end on the neck pickup as well. It's definitely nowhere near as bright as both pickups or bridge, but that's expected being a tally. It's got that 50s kind of vibe. Both. And bridge. I love bridge pickup on this, it's mighty. Sounds great with the volume up and down. It's still nice for that rhythm stuff. Beautiful. Over to some cleaner tones now, thanks to the vintage channel on the PV Bandit with just a little bit of delay. This is neck pickup. That sounds good. All right, over to both pickups. Man, that's all tally and over to bridge to bring back that snap. That's pretty bright actually, so let's try the tone control. I'll put it to about half. This is about half. It's not really doing much, a little bit more. Now you can hear it's sort of taken out that top. Back up. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So what do I like and dislike about this particular guitar? Now in terms of the neck shape and feel, it feels great. I love the fact they haven't put vintage sized frets on here as well. So that gets a big thumbs up from me. The pickups sound great. The neck pickup on this is awesome. I've had a lot of pickups in one of my Telecasters over the years. I think there's more chirp in this neck pickup than some of my more expensive boutique pickups that I've had over the years, and that's no kidding. So in terms of the neck pickup on this, I prefer it even over my SX Telecaster. We'll do a shootout coming up about that as well. But I think it's a nicer sounding neck pickup. Bridge pickup rocks, it's got heaps of snap, all that kind of thing. One of the biggest letdowns for me is the tuners. They're not great on this particular model. Now, Rick and I also had a chance to review this Harley Benton right here as well, which is a beauty, and the tuners on this are much better than the tuners on this particular guitar. Some of them just feel a little too loose. Some of them take a while to start to do anything, and some are way too tight. It's not something that looks like I can adjust easily as well, but I'll take a look and see what I can do. Now, in terms of the weight, this is quite heavy, so that might be a pro or a con, depending sort of uh, what you're into. I guess one of my only other criticisms is how sort of untidy some of the edges of the fretboard looks. It's not a huge deal. Obviously, they've sort of gone over it with a file to sort of take the fret edges off and all that kind of stuff, but some of it looks pretty rough. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. I couldn't care less about that kind of thing, but I know a lot of people are into the cosmetic thing of, of how the guitar sort of looks. Uh, in terms of the rest of the, rest of the guitar goes, the body finish looks good. I like, you know, this natural sort of clear coat thing. They've used a pretty cool 
jack down here as well, which is great. I don't think this is one of those ones that's gonna come loose anytime soon. Definitely looks a lot better than the Fender sort of cup ones that they use. Um, overall, I think it looks good. It plays great straight out of the box. So that's a, that's a huge bonus. Anytime I get sent an inexpensive guitar, something that's not quite as expensive as you know, some of the mid to high end stuff, one of the things I usually think of, oh man, I'm probably gonna have to set it up. No, nah, what you heard was straight out of the box in my hands, straight onto YouTube. So uh, in terms of playability, this plays just as well as my Fender, it plays just as well as my SX, it's just different. I think uh, one of its strengths is, like I said, the pickups in here are really, really good. A huge thanks again goes out to Toman for sending this out. I've had so many requests to review one of these guitars, so I hope the review is helpful. If it is and it lasted this long, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Overall, for the price, like I mentioned, it's hard to beat. I could take this to a gig, no problems at all, and play it. And it doesn't really feel too dissimilar to my more expensive guitars, which is kind of leading me to believe now you might not kind of need to spend that kind of money anymore to get a good playable guitar that sounds and looks cool. So let me know what you think anyway, guys. It's all subjective stuff. You may or may not like the tone, but for what I like, I like it. So thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.